Before the video begins, make sure you're subscribed to see more natural history content like this. Hit the bell icon to keep yourself in the loop and leave a comment if you feel like it. Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. Happy Spooky Month! Hope it's been going well for you. One of the most common critters to discuss around this time of year is the bloodsucker, the hematophage. Usually it's the mythical monster, vampire, or the eponymous vampire bat, but that would be boring. Plus, I'm already going to discuss stuff about actual vampires sometime this month, so let's deviate. We have a ton of bloodsuckers that ruin our days. Mosquitoes, bedbugs, ticks, leeches, and more are all common critters that take to munching on our red liquids. But this way of life can be beneficial to all sorts of organisms, many of which we never associate with bloodsucking. Take the Lepidopteran, or moths and butterflies. No one would ever think, this cute little flutter beast is gonna land on my hand and stab me until it gets enough of my delicious gooey bits to fill its fat little body. Turns out there are some that do just that. Meet the vampire moths. These little guys belong to the family Arebidae. These guys are collectively referred to as fruit-piercing moths, as they use their hardened proboscis to reach into fruits to suck out their juices instead of drinking nectar like normal moths. The ones specifically called vampire moths belong to the species Calyptera thelictri, though the vampire moth name can also be used for the entire Calyptera genus, which has a total of 18 species. Let's focus on the Calyptera thelictri species, since that's the one that has the most info on it, and the other species of the genus differs mostly in geography and color. These guys are super small, with a wingspan of 40 to 45 millimeters. They can be found in Japan, Korea, China, Malaysia, the Urals, and Southern Europe, but have recently been found as far north as Finland, due to warming of the climate in the areas between the Normal Range and Finland. They were also observed in Sweden, which is further west. These guys are called vampire moths because they can suck blood like a mosquito. Well, not exactly like a mosquito, those guys are highly specialized for their job. Over the course of this group's evolution, they took the mouth parts their cousins, the fruit suckers, used for sucking fruit juices, and co-opted them for sucking blood. A proboscis that's hard enough and spiky enough to drill into the skin of fruit will be good enough to drill under the skin of any large organisms nearby for that sweet, sweet blood. Let's take a closer look at their instrument of phlebotomy. It's similar to the proboscis of other moths and butterflies, but is very strong, highly pointed, and covered in hard, horny barbs. These guys also primarily feed on fruit juices like their cousins, but will readily land on large mammals in their area to dine on blood. Their victims differ depending on the geography of the given moth species, but ranges from ungulates to elephants to humans. Based on research done in the late 2000s, these moths have been observed munching on buffalo, sambar deer, Malayan tapirs, and nilgai antelopes. Once the researchers brought the moths to the lab, they found the moths readily pierced any human fingers offered to them. These moths aren't mosquitoes and aren't great at being bloodsuckers. They take a long time to get enough blood out, with some recorded at sucking for up to an hour. Similar to other bloodsuckers, the vampire moths have developed ways to make sure their hosts are as unaware of their presence as possible. While sucking blood, the moths drool from the base of their proboscis. The saliva runs down the tube and helps to anesthetize the wound. A wonderfully awesome, super great thing these moths do while sucking is regurgitate some of the blood to reabsorb it. That's exactly the thing that ticks do, and is the main way ticks spread disease, since the bacteria that cause the disease are in the tick's gut. These moths are perfect disease vectors, they just don't know it yet. Thankfully, no diseases have been linked to the vampire moths and hopefully it stays that way. The vampire moth bite will begin to itch afterwards, lasting a few hours. The area surrounding the bite begins to harden and will stay that way for five weeks. It turns out that only male moths suck blood. The blood-sucking adaptation is possibly an example of mud puddling. 
mud puddling being the action of moths and butterflies, usually males, congregating upon a puddle of mud, rotting plant matter, carrion, or feces, and sucking up the moisture that remains. This behavior is to consume a bunch of sodium to supplement the plant-rich, sodium-poor diets of butterflies and moths. This behavior can also be for the males to pass on a packet of sodium to the females, so they may provide their brood with a boost of nutrients. So, they aren't quite like true vampires, but have taken advantage of their ancestors' parts to get a new resource. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.